Before beginning, two things. Number one, recording on a mobile device. I normally would not drop two videos in a day, but man, this thing here. Number two, if you have not checked out this channel, make sure you're subbed. Make sure you hit that bell for daily notifications. And if you want to help this channel out, there are links in the description. One of those is our foray into independent comic books, Case of the Littlest Umbrella. Two comic books are associated with that. One message, we basically don't have to walk lockstep with gatekeepers. I'll talk more on that at the end of the video, but if you want to, check that out. So today we are returning to that wonderful world of litigation, and my, what a wonderful world it turned out to be today. I did not expect to see something like we're looking at here, and yet, well, here we are. 1,188 pages of absolute awesomeness, where we have three affidavits stuck in it. We're talking about Chuck Huber, we're talking about Slaytosh, we're talking about a document that absolutely, fundamentally undermines everything that people have been trying to throw at Vic Mignogna. What's interesting about this document, too, is it puts together a really good timeline of events. And that's what I want to focus on, because we're not going to go through 1,188 pages. In fact, affidavits, they will have their own videos here, and we'll talk about this stuff in live streams to go through it in more detail. However, I want to show you what this thing looks like and then remember what we saw from Monica, from Ron, from other people. And you compare. You know, you take that compare, contrast, and really think about what you saw. So this, as you can see here, is the plaintiff's response to defendant's TCPA motion to dismiss. Now we have our background facts here. Now, the background facts, uh, they go right to the point. For years, the working environment at Funimation was amorous and sexually charged. Its programming is still salacious or sexual, such as Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt, starring Jamie Markey, also a writer, as Panty, and uh, Monica Rial as Stocking, a show all about sex and eating candy, and two fallen angels dressed as schoolgirls who use their lingerie as weapons to fight bad guys, and prison school, where the school is ruled by a secret council of sadistic female students, and boys are in for a world of hurt, a super raunchy anime series, and the most perverted anime show. Hmm, so you see, that goes right in there, describing this workplace that, again, we've seen a little bit about lately, haven't we? Man, Funimation, you definitely lay it on the line there, don't you? At times, Funimation uses provocative imagery to promote its shows, such as Jamie and Monica in this promotion. You can see that right there. Many people have discussed it from their show, Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. In fact, this raunchy environment at times appears at conventions attended by by its voice actors. For example, Jamie making out with Vic. You can see that there. We've talked about that before. At 2010 convention to Tucson, Arizona, or Monica being spanked at the 2011 Anime Detour Convention in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So you can see that one there. Rumors of Vic being an a-hole, using fans, and being a P to the E to the D to the O were begun by Funimation's de facto manager, Chris Sabat, Monica, and Jamie. Early 2000s are the early aughts, long before any post or tweet cited by defendant were made. Now, if you look this up and you want to see where that comes from, ah, uh, Chuck Huber. I mean, he lays down the groundwork for something, again, that is absolutely, it's devastating when you go in. But continuing, Funimation nevertheless points to the January 16, 2019 tweet by hashtag Han Leia tagged it uh, with the question, Hey Funimation, why do you employ a known P to the E to the D to the O file? And uh, a linking to a post on Pretty Ugly Little Liars as initiating allegations against Vic and triggering its investigation. But Han Leia did not state that Vic is a 
a quote-unquote known, again, you know that word there, and Vic has never been charged as such, which is true. No charges whatsoever. In fact, no investigation into that whatsoever. Indeed, on January 18, 2019, Mars Girl posted, Hey, I just want to be certain. Is it possible you were remembering voice actor? And well, we know that certain voice actor. You know the one that had relations with a person that's involved in this, that married a 16-year-old to stay out of prison? Yeah, that one. Referring to a different Farmer Funimation voice actor, not Vic, has been the only one charged with uh, a type of assault on a minor. On January 20th, Vic tweeted unequivocal denials of Helen Leia's charges with, and sincerely apologized to anyone who felt he had been less than kind and grateful or whom he had made feel badly or uncomfortable, and he finished with a statement as possible. So you can see that, him denying, basically, that he had ever been involved. Categorical denial. You know, most of us, we would deny something like that, too. I know a lot of people now say, you shouldn't sound off about this stuff. You shouldn't try to answer that. But come on. I mean, most people, when you see that, that brings out a response. And that's the whole idea of this. It's just like being called an ist and a phobe in 2016. That rolling in to a certain four-letter N-word, you know, Nazi. Or now, this another four-letter word that they like to throw out. It brings out denial, and it basically alters conversation. So you can go out and you can bury somebody. Now, a few days later, on January 22nd, Ron began telephoning and tweeting uh, Christopher Slatosh, which again, his stuff is in here. And wow, it is a bombshell as well. It showcases exactly how he was approached, what went on, that affidavit. Wow, it is... It is an, its own video. I mean, it is a monster. A host of Kamehacon convention, Ronald accused Vic of assaulting four people, Monica, two twins who lived with me, and another voice actor's girlfriend, told Slaytosh that Sony was conducting an investigation and the criminal charges would soon be filed against Vic. Monica also telephoned Slaytosh and called Vic a quote-unquote, well, you know, what type of predator, and repeatedly asserted that criminal charges would soon be filed against him. So, there's a second part of that, too. Not only was Ron in contact, but Monica was also contacting him. Ooh. <laughs> During these telephone conversations, Monica and Ronald both urged Slaytosh to breach his contract with Vic, despite his explanation that doing so would be a breach of a written contract with Vic and to refuse continuing to do business with Vic in the future. Ronald threatened that Monica would cancel her appearance with K uh, Kamea Khan and that his company would withdraw its financial sponsorship of the convention Monica likewise threatened to convince other voice actors to cancel their appearances at KameaCon if Slaytosh did not breach his written contract with Vic. So, you see all kinds of problems there. Tuttle Group is brought in, you know, as a weapon. You have other voice actors brought in as weapons. You have all of this stuff transpiring behind the scenes. Ooh, Funimation, that does not look good. You thought trending for 24 hours looked bad because of a few voice leaks. Oh, this stuff, it really looks bad. But continuing... Due to Ronald's disclosure of Sony's investigation and his and Monica's pressure, Slaytosh canceled Vic's appearance at KameaCon in breach of his written contract. Slaytosh eventually re-invited Vic to attend KameaCon, but only after considerable expense by both sides and requiring Vic to pay for additional security, something not required of other guests. Monica made good on her threat. So, Monica, you know, as you know, she demanded another venue. She said it was because of security purposes. Amazing how you can go in, you can undermine a person, destroying contractual obligations, and then make it their fault. On January 23rd, Monica and Tammy Denbro, uh, the Sony employee, exchanged emails in which Monica thanks her for, quote, making me feel at ease and helping me realize it wasn't any Thing I did wrong. And Denbo uh, 
is glad it helped to talk it through. On January 24th, Ron Toy tweeted that, I know with 100% certainty that Vic assaulted four people I love. January 25th, Dimbolt contacted Vic. Funimation was conducting a confidential investigation into Vic's writing Monica's name on a jelly bean. She threw to him at a convention, not at Funimation's offices, and then eating it. He has flirting with two adult women at a convention, not at Funimation's offices, who had been flirting with him for more than a year, and a single consensual kiss between Vic and a co-worker more than three years ago at Funimation's office, for which no complaint was ever made. There was no allegation of abuse, assault, or harassment. That day, Ronald tweeted, Vic assaulted four people very close to me. Now, you look at that stuff. Again, they say Han Leia started that all. Again, with the you're employing a well you don't notice anything in the investigation talking about that potential type of uh, allegation do you 26th ronald declared that vic is guilty of again that type of assault and that vic is a predator Two days later, the 28th, Ronald publicly stated that Vic is a man with a clear history of, well, again, a specific type of deviance. 29th, Funimation informed Vic that his contract with Funny was terminated but gave him no reason for the termination. On the 30th, Monica emailed Denbo thanking her for the 29th voicemail update and for being so kind. Monica also exchanged six emails with Lisa Gibson that day, during which Monica asked Gibson what she could say publicly, broached when Funimation would make a statement, and thanked Gibson for her update, and Gibson encouraged Monica to, quote, hang in there. On the 31st, Monica had a telephone call with Gibson and Sony's Scott B., and Ronald tweeted, I know of at least four assaults. I am glad to see conventions canceled and the truth coming to light. Three days after the telephone calls with funny executives uh, Gibson, Bredo, uh, Monica mirrored Ronald's language when she treated the truth will come out. That day, Vic publicly denied his detractors' allegations. Wasting no time on February the 4th, Ma Ronald uh, mocked Vic's apology and publicly claimed, I know without question he hurt people very close to me. Those tears are fake. He then declared uh, there were over 100 ladies and counting coming forward with allegations against Vic. Next day, February the 5th, Ronald uh, publicly called on Funimation to make a public statement about Vic and for Vic to be banned indefinitely, again publicly calling Vic a predator. On the 6th, Ronald again publicly accused Vic of assaulting my fiancé, declaring over 100 counts of assault, making it clear that the objective was Vic being blacklisted and out of work and predicted that the proof of allegations against Vic will be getting him fired from everything. On the 7th, in an email to Funimation's uh, Trina Simon, Monica accused Vic of assaulting her in 2007 as if synchronized. Jamie tweeted the same day that Vic is a monster. There are dozens upon dozens of reports. And Ronald again publicly called on Funimation to make a statement. Jamie then revealed their plan. He used name and shame to destroy Vic's reputation. Hmm, so you go all the way back. See, this doesn't start right when all of this new stuff starts either. It doesn't start around the 13th. We actually see even more stuff that's connected to other people that might end up getting sued as well. I mean, if you look at A&N's connection to this, oh man, again, allegedly, allegedly, but yeah, they actually contacted uh, Han Leia during all this stuff too. Ugh, interesting stuff as it moves forward. February 8th, Vic tweeted that he did not want anyone claiming to support him making threats. Let me be perfectly clear. I would never condone anything uh, approaching this whatsoever. That was actually, in my opinion, due to a response from Mars Girl saying that quote-unquote alt writers were coming out and defending him. That same day, Monica and Funimation's Colleen Carroll mocked Vic for his private email to Monica, explaining that he 
always considered her a dear friend and asking her to tell him what he'd done to make her so angry. On the February the 9th, Jamie tweeted that Vic assaulted her so she could not remember when and goes through the story of hair pulling and also that Vic had done the exact same thing to half a dozen other women. I personally know that he's a predator. Two days later, on the 11th, Funimation tweeted that. So you know by now what Funimation had to say there. Later that day, Monica tweeted, and just so we're clear, legal he's the legal definition of harassment. Funimation Twitter followers knew exactly what Funimation was saying. The result of the investigation was that Vic had engaged in harassing or threatening behavior, particularly since Monica had reinforced it with her description of multiple investigations with a testimony, proof, evidence. I am one of a dozen men and women who participated. Oddly, Funimation had never contradicted or corrected Monica's signal boosting. And that's interesting, too. I mean, they tell you, hey, we only went out and talked to these people here, and yet you're talking dozens of people that were supposedly involved in something. Two days later, on the 13th, Vic tweeted that he had no idea that any animosity towards him had existed until these last few weeks, apologized if he made anyone feel uncomfortable, and begged for people to please be kind to one another. I mean, those things too. What a mess. The 16th, Ron was talking about Vic. He would be a registered certain type of offender. Two days later, on the, uh, the 18th, he confirmed that Monica was a Funimation employee. The next day, Monica tweeted that Vic had been accused of specific type of harassment, alleged Vic had grabbed her hair, whispered in her ear, and uh, claimed, wit- uh, claimed she witnessed him do it to so many people. She claimed he had forced a kiss on her in the mid-aughts and called him a predator. Later in deposition and her motion to dismiss, Monica expanded on the force kiss story, claiming Vic invited her to his hotel, threw her on the bed and forcibly kissed her, and that Stan Dolan witnessed her leaving Vic's hotel room. Both Vic and Mr. Dolan expressly deny Monica's allegations. This also leaves out the fact that that story, well, it changed from I-09 too, with her backing in and falling into a bed as well. I mean... Uh, So when you go through this, again, you see this layout. And then on the 19th, Ron suddenly switched from calling Vic a predator, registered type of offender, and accused him of assault and harassment for towing the line that Funimation would henceforth use. Vic has been terminated by Funimation for inappropriate conduct. See, you're looking at this stuff. Wow. Now, this goes through, like I said, and there is so much more to this document. And I think the affidavits themselves, they actually merit their own coverage. Because this, again, as you see me rolling forward, we're talking about 1,188 pages. The stuff with Chuck Huber, wow. It tells you the, the background of this. It tells you all of the history before any of this started and how these people felt about Vic Mignogna, how they went out and they called him all kinds of terrible things, how they went after him because he actually sold autographs. He was one of the first people to do that, and so on. They've always wanted to demonize, chastise him, but, you know, in this new day and age, it's easy to burn someone down. Slaytosh is mentioned, you know, within the affidavit. Wow, that stuff, it is amazing because you get to see exactly how all of that stuff plays out. You get to see the pressure put on people. It's crazy stuff. Then you also have other people. Like I said, we'll cover all of that. We'll cover it in live streams as well. But this, it gives you a blow by blow. It gives you an idea of what's there. And we we haven't even scratched the surface. We've hit 14 pages of it. I mean, it's insane. But anyhow, you tell me about this new revised timeline. What do you see within that? And when you think about the background of Funimation, you think about what you see as an environment, you've seen trending and other things. What do you think about that in relation to what we've heard about Vic? Also, when we're talking about those terrible twins out there, isn't it interesting that certain people had them living in their homes and yet... 
huh, consensually talking to them in a, a certain hit-on way, oh, that's too much. Adults talking to adults consensually, oh, monsters, terrible monsters. But anyhow, you tell me what you think. Like this kind of content too? Make sure you're subscribed. Like I said, make sure you hit that bell and check out the comic book in the links if you want to help out. That, two comic books associated with it. It's a Lovecraftian tale for all ages, meaning everyone can enjoy it, plus another one talking talking about the insanity in comic books. Also, leave me your comments, pro and con. I'm curious what you think about this stuff. And wow, when you look at this thing, like I said, it keeps moving forward, but it keeps defining what's here. And it keeps giving us a behind-the-scenes look. What I'm wondering with that, too, is how when you're part of this, uh, this crowd that enjoys something, how do you ever see it? as it was before. How does this not damage and it, all of that escapism? I want to end, too, by saying, unlike these people, I appreciate you showing up. I appreciate you taking part in this endeavor, and I want to thank you for it. You know, these people, they keep forgetting who leads to their success. I don't want to be that. So again, thank you. I appreciate you, and we'll do this again soon. Thanks.